Okay, go for a take. Take one. Action. We are going for a take where we get to take up those who work in the film and TV industry on a specifically chosen film and about their time in the business. Yep, and today's take is on the new Gladiator film, Gladiator 2, and this is your spoiler warning. And in today's take, we're joined with martial artist, fight director, fight performer, Canon Ali. Hi. Ooh. Hello. Hello. Thank you. Thanks for having me. How are you doing? <laughs> Very well. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Good. 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 Good to be on. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's, a, yeah. it's a pleasure to have you here. Um, <laughs> You are a sick um, fight teacher, fight director. Oh, uh, so, yeah, it's going to be really cool hearing your thoughts on the film, getting your take on it. And, uh, yeah, um, also getting everyone else's take because I feel like we all had different opinions on it. So, yeah, <clears throat> start us all off uh, rolling. What was everyone's general take on it? I mean, I went in with no expectations. Um, so I wasn't let down. Um, I really enjoyed it. Huh. Like I enjoyed the soundtrack, um, the the cast, the acting, uh, the story. Um, I, I wasn't really too bothered about like the historical accuracies. I just I I just enjoyed watching this uh, this story. Hmm. I. I, I agree. I mean, I went into it with expectations because it's a Ridley Scott film for a start. So I feel like that comes with a caliber of its own. And then you look at the cast and you see Denzel Washington, Paul Mezcal, you know, Connie Nielsen, like all these, all these big, amazing actors. And it sort of sets the stakes higher. And when I was watching it, I thought, oh man, Gladiator 2. It was the sort of film which I like to go and watch and not think about because it's just there's so much to watch. You don't really need to think everything's there for you. I mean, they built the Colosseum, like they, they had all this set there in a, in a desert. They didn't have a green background or a blue background and had to pretend it was there. They did all that. And I think that came across in the, in the imagery on, on screen and it just painted a picture for you. And it started where it didn't start where the last one ended, but it almost felt like it was a continuation, which I really liked. It wasn't its own separate film. It felt like it was the same sort of theme, but with different people. Mm. Yeah. I feel like I would have, maybe it's just like personal opinion. I would have preferred if it if it was like its own separate film. There were quite a lot of moments where I was like, cool, okay, I get it. This is Gladiator 2. It's a... We're going to do like 20 callbacks to the first one. And like mm. a few were nice uh, for the fans and for the um, that continuation of the plot, like um, following in his father's footsteps, even though he didn't fully know who his father was, although that was kind of ambiguous. And then maybe le later on you're like, oh, he kind of always did know. He just told others that he didn't. Um, mm. I would have liked it if it was more more of its own film, more of a standalone thing. Um, I was actually reading that there was a script. This is an IMDb trivia, so I don't know how true it is, but that Nick Cave wrote. Yeah. And it was like this mythological one where Russell Crowe goes down into like, um, I don't know the equivalent of the- uh, Tartarus? Tartarus. Is that world. Greek? Greek, but uh, I mean, the Greek and the Roman- But like the underworld similar. or whatever. Yeah. And then has to go and fight like the gods and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, that sounds so cool. Like Kratos. Whereas this felt like um, just a reiteration of a lot of the same sort of plot. I don't know. What did you think? I, I, I hear what you're saying, actually. I know what you mean. Um, but in the end, I think you, it's one of those films, you know, you, you know what you're going in for or you should do. I, I think it's, it, it, you know, it's that kind of Spartacus, Ben-Hur sort of epic mm. thing. It's like, it was like Shakespeare on film for mm. me. It was almost, and you had those characters that, um, and I know that it's, it, pretty much all the characters existed in one way or another but um but you know whether whether they did what they did in the film or not it, it kind of it's immaterial to me in some ways because it was just it is what it is you know you're going in there probably to watch action <laughs> um intrigue you know um, yeah. you know s suspicious minds like working against each other and um it was just like it was just yeah it was like a shakespearean plot I feel like played I've, out in, in an epic. Yeah, I feel like um, we tend to like overanalyze and dissect stuff, then to in, instead 
just enjoy what it is. It's it's art. It's a piece of art. Hmm. You know, and you, you want to you want to think about how it made you feel, hmm. than what it made you think. I, hmm. I think as well, if you want to watch a like, I think it was historically accurate, um, but obviously there were some things which were taken further. But if you want to watch a historically accurate portrayal of Rome. Go and watch a documentary. Like, yeah, yeah. That, that's what a documentary is for. And this is a film based on the reality of Rome, but sort of having it as almost like a metaphor. Um, I went to Rome recently, and I I went on a um, a few tours of the the ancient history there, and learning about that and seeing what was in in there. And people were like, "Oh, you can't have water in the Colosseum," but actually, they flooded the Colosseum before they made the animals come up from the ground. So it's it, that is historically accurate. Then you add sharks, and you go, "Well." Was that accurate? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I wasn't there. But what I do know... <laughs> <laughs> I was. <laughs> Believe it or not, I know. I look young. Um, <laughs> uh, but like, they were the Roman Empire. They they did so much. They got crocodiles from the Nile. Like, yeah. from the Nile. That's in that's in Egypt. Mm, yeah. So far away. So to do that, it's that in itself is a feat. And then mm. all the animals and exotic animals from places where people had never been to before and do that and have it in a place where people are watching on such a large scale i mean the coliseum's capacity is about apparently seventy-five thousand people which is the equivalent to most football stadiums now hmm. which is yeah, it's a good insane. point as well because like yeah. they just had the power and however far their imagination could stretch like yeah let's get crocodiles Ooh. from the now they could do it Ooh. instantly yeah. uh, some uh power hungry or um dictator as an emperor or whatever who wanted to flex their muscles and show off to all their fans in the stadium and stuff like that yeah. could just say hey i want to do this and if you don't do it then uh you're not going to have a good time and it's the, that that's the thing as well that's what i'm saying it's that kind of like macro well that, that that like big the big picture that you get of, of of rome um you know the betrayals and the you know suspicion and the politics um but the specifics of it as well with the characters who yeah. actually do double cross each other, who actually do murder each other, who actually, you know, two brothers who actually do want to kill each other, who are in mm. power. Yeah. Um, it's just, you know, this is, this is what I'm saying. This is why Shakespeare wrote about um, those kind of people. Yeah. And I, I keep going back to that. It felt like that to me just, and um, yeah, I feel like you've got to know what you, what ticket you're buying when you go in for that film. Mm. I don't really, I mean, you know, you can have little gripes here and there, but I don't understand why. I mean, what you're expecting, like The Remains of the Day or something, which is a great film, one of my favourites, but it's a different film. Mm -hmm. right? um, so, yeah, you got to know what you got to know what you're doing mm -hmm. <laughs> and what you're going into. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, yeah I, um, and to jump off a point you made earlier as well, uh, thinking or feeling, I think that's thinking, ironically, uh, a really good point. I was aware as I was watching it that I wasn't really... Maybe, again, it's just really hard not to compare Ooh. it to the first film because the first film is so emotionally driven. Um, there's so much anger and pain and anguish after losing his wife and his kid that drives him to do all this stuff. And it's it's um, it's a feeling of wanting to fight against the corruption. Um, I don't know about you guys. I didn't feel like... Denzel kept on saying to Paul, you know, as the character names or whatever, like there's so much rage in you, you should keep that rage. And I was like, I don't feel this rage that people are talking about, except when he's mm. fighting. Mm. Did you guys feel like it was? I I think the rage itself, the rage isn't what was interesting. It was why the rage was there that was interesting. Mm. And I think like for me, like thinking of that rage and some a point I made was like there is rage, but the understanding is why why the rage is there in the first place. That's what creates the story. And when when you see him, you know, bite a monkey's arm or mm. whatever animal that was, it um, was some weird like mutant monkey. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe the word rage was the wrong word. Maybe you should have used like fierce or like or like a. Mm. I feel per like Ridley, perseverant. I don't know, but really yeah, determination Scott, yeah, or something determined, but. I feel like that word has to be in there for a purpose because they wouldn't just have it in there. Hmm. Like maybe like rage, like what actually is rage if you think about it, like it's an emotion. Sometimes you can't describe emotions. So the idea of rage could be so like- and What it's fueled by. Yeah, yeah. So the actual emotion of rage is a, what's the word? It's it's a spectrum. It's, it's like an just, umbrella term yes. for a lot of different- mm. Yeah. It's a culmination of different emotions. Yeah. Like sadness or disappointment mm -hmm. or- 
or fear um and that fact all those culminations can like result in i think i, I also i don't know whether this will fly or not but there's also that subtle manipulation and control that well, it starts subtle and then becomes something very different yeah mm. um from you know denzel washington um that you know it, it, it maybe maybe he's trying to evoke that or hmm. or, or, or bring so i don't know bring it out of him yeah yeah he sees it oh, go on sorry no i don't know I, I i always i was always taught as an actor to mine the text so that what some what people say about your character uh, is, is what tr is what is true i suppose so maybe that i don't know but I, for me it could be that sometimes people do try and draw what they want from people yeah when mm -hmm. they're in a relationship that's mm -hmm. an interesting point Maybe he, because he is a very manipulative character. He is. So maybe he wanted him to, like, uh, what's the word? Gaslight him into believing mm -hmm. that he is very I, angry. I think. I think as well. Just bouncing off that, um, when when someone is in rage or in a state where they can't control, they're easier to control by someone else because they don't know. They can't think about what they're doing. So when you've got when you've got someone like that who's so powerful, and um, and then. Denzel Washington who can sort of like not tame it but know how to manipulate it it gives him the power because all it takes for um Lucius uh Paul Mescal's character is to make one mistake and that's it for him and it's over and Denzel Washington's got the power because he's so cunning and that's what I liked about him I thought all the characters had their own ambitions and they were so detailed and you could you could see bits of it but you didn't know exactly where it was going um, and with, with, with Denzel's character, it felt to me like there wasn't that much difference between him and Paul Mescal's character. They both wanted freedom and to get to get to a place of safety and comfort because, well, Denzel's character, I believe he was uh, Marcus Aurelius. He was with Marcus Aurelius before that. So he's clearly come from the bottom as well and made his way up. And Paul Mescal's character felt like he'd started high went to the bottom that made his way up mm. so like the two comparisons between the two there's not actually that that's much a really difference good between yeah them. they just swap don't they yeah they're mm. just fueled by different things and yeah, those and the two um emperors as well like they were very easily to overthrow it reminds me of the uh like the mm. cycle um like hard times create strong men strong men create good times good times create weak men and then weak men create hard times mm. so it's like a cycle huh. that's very interesting and the, the the two the two emperors i think they they seem to be based off the two roman emperors caligula and nero uh caligula we talked about on megalopolis that's his actual name because <laughs> <laughs> i said it <laughs> I was last just time. grinning to myself <laughs> <laughs> and um obviously he was from from what text there is very messed up and Nero was the same according to text he killed his mum and two of his wives um and died in when he was 30 so very young um and he was the last Roman emperor before Rome fell mm. so it was interesting seeing those two and seeing t two of the most corrupt emperors portrayed as brothers who wanted to almost kill each other well they did kill yeah. each other but apparently those two guys did exist yeah, mm, Caracalla yeah. and Caligula and Nero. Yeah, yeah. No, that the two brothers that are in the film, they actually, they did exist. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah wow. And they and ruled for a couple of years, yeah. mm. um, and actually did want to kill each other. That's that's the mm, yeah. That's um, crazy. And they were at each other's throat. Uh, and I guess it's a an envy thing, or you know. But I mean, I'm a twin. I'm an identical twin. I've actually, got a twin in real life. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, I, I mean, I don't know if they were twins necessarily, but um, yeah, I think that close bond sometimes can be uh, you feel like you're only getting part of the share maybe mm. you feel like mm. if i were an only child um you know and it, uh, maybe it's that you know corruption and, and hedonism that they you know that they, they can have what they want uh and you know what do you give to the guy who has everything mm. <laughs> yeah. don't give him a 50 percent share i don't suppose definitely mm. i think it's paranoia more than anything i think when once you reach that that ep epitome of 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 where they are that everyone wants i think it'd make anyone paranoid mm. 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 yeah they got further to fall yeah um what were lose. you guys thinking in terms of just the acting i guess across the board uh obviously we've got 
just like an A-list of Hollywood stars, Denzel, yeah. Connie Nielsen, Paul Mescal, um Pedro Pascal. Pedro Pascal. Uh, there were other people that just popped up out of nowhere. The guy who played the hound yeah. just popped up at the end. I was like, this guy is so criminally underused. Why is he yeah. just, he's got like two lines, wears a helmet so you can't really see him. And A, lo a lot of the does... cast from the movie 300 were in it as well. Yeah, the, yeah. Uh, the king the, or the whatever chieftain at the chieftain guy. Um, yeah, the chieftain guy and I think a few others. I think a few of the gladiators. Mm -hmm. Who was um, your favorite character in the show? The show or the film? I'd love Pedro Pascal. I thought he was brilliant. Um, How come? He's, he's, I, I just love his, his style and his acting um, and his, his like career tra trajectory and how he is as a person as well, not yeah. just an actor. You know, I, I, I have a lot of respect for, for, for him. Mm -hmm. mm. What about you guys? I, I was going to say uh, Denzel Washington. Yeah. Because like, for me, he's one of the best actors ever. Yeah. Um, not just of a generation, but ever. He's absolutely brilliant. And I could watch him read the phone book. He's that good. Um, he's in like... I, I have lists because I can never quite settle on anyone, but it's kind of like there are three actors and he's in there, the top three that mm -hmm. I always go to. He's brilliant. And it's good to see him. Sort of what I liked was, is it's that, that you know, bad guy, but there's no such thing really as yeah. a bad guy. It's, it, it, it's, 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 um, you've just got flawed heroes and mm. somebody's a hero to everybody else. And, um, we've just got wants and needs and desires and we just go for it, don't we? Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, it's, some people will see that as bad or whatever. And I don't necessarily, I don't, I don't necessarily see a, that kind of mo moral duality that maybe people see because of the acting, you know, you've got to, you've got to know what your character wants and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, so you just play it. Um, uh, and as an actor, that's fun. Mm. Um, you know, we can look on people in history as bad and good and we should in some ways for what they do, but. At the time, they're just going after what they want. Mm. Um, Everyone's a hero in their own story. Yeah, exactly. That's it. And I think it was just, you know, it's just delicious to see it. Really, he's, he's, and he's brilliant. I just love him. It's amazing. I um, I, I'm torn between Denzel and Paul Mescal. I really admire Paul Mescal. I think he's an amazing actor, and I think he he really brought it to this role. I think it's a very hard role to play because there's so much high expectations. It's, it's Gladiator. It's been what 20 years since the last one. So for him to bring it and with that pressure and, you know, opposite some of the, like you said, one of the best actors ever, Denzel Washington, like it's, it's, it's a feat and a testament to him and his work and his craft and his mentality. And uh, yeah, he, he was very good in it. I really enjoyed it. How about mm. yourself, Matt? Uh, it's got to be Denzel, same mm. as you. Mm. Uh, he is, so, you know, when we finish watching the film, we won't talk between us, uh, but I was able to talk to Ollie, who's been on the podcast before about it. And I felt like there was a, I was thinking, were some of them miscast? Which feels kind of potentially harsh to say, but I don't think they were miscast. I think, you know, when you see amazing actors fall flat a little bit, or there's not a huge amount of range, or you're just wanting more because you've seen them do amazing stuff. Mm. You know, um, using the whole spectrum of emotion um, and uh, performing to the to their full extent, and then you see them not bringing what maybe you wanted. Um, I feel like sometimes it could fall on either the script or the direction or just the immense scale of the piece, like putting too much pressure on them potentially. Um, so I'd say about Paul Mescal amazing emotional actor like pure just heart he just riffs like um and you see it in every performance uh what's it called all of us strangers normal people um after sun he's used to doing all these downscaled like indie films where it just relies on dialogue and it's close-ups so when it got to the huge like i'm now going to shout across two like a valley to two armies i was like then shout Mm. Instead, it was quite downplayed for a lot of it. Yeah. Whereas Denzel and Joseph Quinn, who was also amazing, and the the twins as well. I think the other guy's called Fred. Um, Hatchinger. Yeah. They lent into the characters being big, and I think with a scale like this, you have to match the scale of the film too. 
at least in most like certain moments. You can have other moments where the camera zooms in and it's more downplayed. Denzel just creates this big character. It reminded me kind of of Training Day, yeah, yeah, which is one of my favorite films. He's amazing in that because he's just like he's like the king, and he's just walking around with this swagger, and then he's got all these all this bling on. And it's like this guy could easily be taken and put on like the streets in New York or something, and that element of someone who's come from nothing. I think it's kind of alluded to him being a slave to Marcus Aurelius, yeah. right? And then has worked his way up and then has all this money on his hands and all the chains to show for it mm. and the swagger to show for it. Yeah, there was that uh, echo about like American society as well, mm. like now in that, you know, it is, a, it is in theory a society where you can go from the lowest of low and become if you want, president of the United States, whatever. It's literally, mm. like, in theory, that's what their constitution states. And if you think about it, it's th those power... I, I was thinking about that watching watching the film, is that he even says it in the film. He mm. does. I came from these humble beginnings, and look at me now, basically. Mm. Um, which is just interesting. Is it, it's just interesting to think about what you just what you just said there as a mirror yeah. to history. It mm. felt like... And I didn't feel like the American accent detract, dis detracted or distracted... No, um, don't know about no. you guys. I, I mean, I felt with the accents, uh, it's very hard to to decide what accent to do because you don't really know. I mean, a Roman accent isn't RP. It's not American. It's not um, Irish. It's it's nothing. It's a Roman accent. It's I Italian, mean, isn't it? Yeah, but I mean, I, that, that generation, like we look at the last hundred years of how the the, the like these RP accent has mm. changed. Mm. Um, and how like the London accent has changed. So I feel like it would be very hard. I felt like because there were so many different accents, I was like, part of me was like, why are they all different? Like you've got the British accent, RP, American. But then I was like, but they all came from different places. So it sort of makes sense. Mm. Yeah, Rome's um, like this melting pot. Yeah, yeah it's like, like even Pedro Pascal's got like Medusa on his um, yeah. this chain and his armor. So I was like, maybe he's got some Greek heritage. Well, this yeah. is it. Rome felt like Rome was like a collective of all these different places that they, they'd conquered. And they built this place of like, the, it was like a trophy room. I mean, the Colosseum was a, it, it looks like a project to show like, we are the greatest, we are the best, we can make this, we can make anything happen. Hmm. Um, just in terms of the Colosseum, what I found was interesting and one of the most amazing, one of the shots which really got me was when Lucius goes back to find his mum when she's, when she's been killed in the Colosseum and there's no one there, it's just blood yeah. on the seats. And I thought that, felt like it summed up the whole film because the Colosseum felt like just nothing. It felt like emptiness. It didn't feel like the Colosseum because it was the people that made the Colosseum and the society of Rome. And that sort of is the same when it comes to the emperors not having the people. They lost it because they didn't have the people. A Pedro Pascal's character had the people. Mm -hmm. So that almost felt like it was the people of Rome which gave the power not Rome itself and not the people in power that mm -hmm. had the power. The, the, the Colosseum is like the equi equivalent of like modern day football or a, or a NFL, you know. Um, I don't think Rome would be what it is without the Colosseum because mm. that's, that's its, its main uh, thing. And like how it, how it controlled its population was through distraction of entertainment. So I think that's why they invested so much into the Coliseum so that they could control their, their people. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, just jumping off, talking about the Coliseum and just before we wrap up part one, it would be remiss not to ask a fight director about the fight sequences in the film. Were there any particular standouts or, you know, talking, I guess, objectively, like we spoke about um, things that you would have done differently just because of your own personal taste or what do you think? I don't know. It's difficult to say whether... Um, I don't think I, I don't think so because mm -hmm. I, 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 in terms of doing things differently, I don't think so. Um, it's difficult to speak on those in those terms, really. Um, but I, I um, standout moments. I, I, I like the duels. You know, um, the duel, especially at the end, is mm. just like it was messy. It was, yeah. um, it was a little bit sort of. I, I thought it was just stretching the the boundaries of. Well, <laughs> reality a little bit um In but what, what aspects um well i mean <laughs> there was a sword going like like almost like a psycho sort of stabbed down going down and repeatedly going down and didn't it just kept hitting 
the breastplate of a um and i i, I just thought hmm, okay uh, because that could have gone anywhere <laughs> and you're moving under the water probably and and you know and it only covers this and nothing hit the face or the neck or anything um so and it just perfectly kept hitting that which i guess is i mean it's a maybe it's a poetic thing in some ways it looked cool it looked yeah. great um yeah but part of me was going really um and then um but other than that i, th I just felt yeah I, I just felt it was really good i mean i really enjoyed it mm. um when you it, it's not I, I, again it's not it's difficult to sort of criticize other people's work in that way because that's what they were mm -hmm. that's what they've <laughs> envisaged and that's what they've um you know that's what's manifesting in, in at that moment with those actors on that set or whatever um so i i just really enjoyed it i thought it was it was great i like i quite like messy fights um bill hobbs william hobbs as a famous um fight director from england actually um he's one of my heroes hmm. um and he's done like a lot of his fights in in film are celebrated because they're messy Cool. You know, people get out of breath and <laughs> it's not clean. There's a moment Pedro Pascal is so out of breath. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's just laying on the floor like... <gasps> and I quite like that element of it. Yeah. it you, you sort of, you know, you felt like you were in the thick of it. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Mm. And um, I'm intrigued to hear more about William, William Hobbs. William Hobbs, yeah. In part two. Um, yeah. That's a, that's a cut. 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 <laughs>